definitely, first we need to build up, build up the models of the antenna array, and second we can run the simulation, and uh, next to achieve a beam steering. There are two methods we can achieve the beam steering. First is using phase shifter. For example, here this is a antenna array. It has a one, two, three, four, five radiation elements, and we can just use one part, as see here, to feed all these four radiation elements, and. Uh, this because the signal goes to the first element and then go to the second element and the next is the third element and finally goes to the fourth one and the fifth one. So we can use just the one part to achieve the beam steering. But in this case, we cannot change the, the phase difference because the physical dimension is already set up. So the phase difference is on is depend on micro strip lens. In another case, we can achieve a beam steering by set a part for each of the radiation elements. For example, we can see here, as you can see, the four elements radiation antenna array. Each of the radiation element is a patch antennas, which is fed by the coaxial cable from the backside. As you can see here, this is a sorry. Okay, let me zoom it in. As you can see here, this is a patch antennas, and uh, it is fed by coaxial cables from the backside, and we set the part for the coaxial cables. In this case, we can see that uh, here is four radiation elements, and each of the element we set a. Uh, a feeding part for it. This is part one, part two, part three, and part four. So that when we run the simulation, we can set the phase different for each of the part to achieve a beam steering. And after building up this antenna arrays, we can set a simulations. We need to set up the frequencies and uh, we also need to set up the field monitors here. We I've already set it, uh, the far field uh, monitor at uh, 1.575 gigahertz. And after this, we can run the simulation. After the simulation, what we get is uh, just uh, the far field for each of the radiation elements, as you can see here. This is the far field for the first uh, radiation elements, this is the second radiation elements, this is the third one, this is the fourth one. But in our study, we are more interested in the performance of the antenna array instead of the performance of uh, each radiation elements. So we need to combine the results of uh, each uh, radiation elements. How we can achieve this? It's uh, simple. The CST Studio has this function we can just uh, click the post processing we can find here is a combined results and we select all the thing so we want to combine the far field so we left it at this combined monitor we do not want need this each field so we put it in the excluded monitor and then click OK and then we can set uh, the amplitude of uh, each of the radiation element we want to set. Here we just uh, set them to be equal, each of them has the amplitude of 1. After all these settings, we can click combine, we can get the combined results Here's my combined results of the antenna array. This results combined uh, all the four field of the four radiation elements. It is definitely different from the result of uh, each element. You can see this is uh, just uh, the far field directivity of the of a uh, one radiation element. And here is the combined results of the antenna array and see it uh, as a 3D radiation patterns. Okay, you can see this is the 3D radiation patterns. 
looks beautiful, like uh, two human ears uh, put them together back to back. After this, we get the performance of antenna array. Next, we want to steering the beam. So how can we achieve this? There's two methods to achieve this. One is a, a little bit time consuming um, based on the structure of the antenna array, like a simulation for just the one element and run it to get the results. First, set up solver. So we can see instead of pick up all the ports, we can select and uh, set the, the each of the part, we can click both of them and then OK. And uh, we can this as a show additional settings. And uh, mm, we can set this at uh, change the excitation tab. We change it at uh, simultaneously. And here we can say we can try to change the uh, excitation offset by time shift or phase shift. Since we are doing the beam steering, we want normally people do this by the phase shift. We need to set up the reference frequency and then we can click and change the phase shift here, such as set port 1 as a reference, port 2 at 30 degrees, port 3 at 30 degrees another 30 degrees it is a 60 degrees so here is a 30 degree and here is a plus 30 degree as a 60 degree and uh, comparing with part 3 we plus 30 degree it should be 90 degrees the set is okay and then we click okay we can start run the simulation and we can get the results another method is a uh, faster and easier like a uh, simulation for just the one element uh, run the simulation source type is all parts and run it to get the results next step is click the post processing and also use the combined results here we can achieve it we can select a far field uh, since previously we set the field monitoring we set the frequency at uh, uh, here. We can see field monitors set the frequency at 1.575 gigahertz. So we choose this one. We click this one to exclude the H field uh, and uh, combine the monitor is just the far field. This is what we are interested in. And then click OK. And uh, here we can see four excitations of uh, each part and we can click here and uh, here we just set the amplitude to be equal for each part then we can change the phase of each part such as we set a reference as a part 1 and uh, so we want uh, part 2 to be plus 30 degree comparing with part 1 and part 3 should be plus 30 degrees compared with part 2 so it should be 60 degree so for the same reason, we set this as 90 degrees. And uh, definitely, we can set this phase difference to be uh, different values, such as this from part 1 to part 2 plus 30 degrees, from part 2 to part 3 plus 10 degrees. We can set any values uh, as we want, but uh, in the engineering condition or in the reality, we normally set this phase phase shift to be equal, so we set uh, each part on plus 30 degrees compared with part 1. So, and then we can click combine, we can get the combined results. As you can see here, I've already got this results, and we click it to see the results. As you can see here, the radiation pattern is uh, obviously different from the, the, the non-shifted one. We can also see it in 2D forms. Okay, just one second, we can get the result here. As you can see here, here is the far field directivity. We can see that the mean lobe magnitude is 10.4 dBi and the mean lobe direction is minus 12 degree. And we can also change the magnitude 
of uh, each radiation element, uh, not just uh, the phase of, e of each part. And for this one, I not only changed the phase difference for each of the parts, but I also changed the, the magnitude of uh, each radiation elements. You can see here, I set the first one with a magnitude of 1, the second one with a magnitude of uh, 1.5, the third radiation elements have a magnitude of 2. The fourth one has a magnitude of 2.5. And the phase difference is, uh, let me say, it should be 60 degrees. And we can see this results is uh, different from this one. This one just uh, changed the uh, phase difference. Uh, but they have the same uh, magnitude. So here is the method how we can achieve a beam steering for the antenna array in CST microwave studios. Okay, yeah. And uh, thanks for your watching. Please give me a thumb and uh, subs subscribe for my channel. Thank you.